dun 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 and now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to church with a two dream team. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody ready? We're going to swing. I'll tell you. One, two, one, two, three, four. Welcome to the church with a two dream team. It's uh -huh. 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which makes it time for Church for the Two Drink Minimum. Yes! It's so and exciting! we're so happy that you're here. It is a, it's a, a 20 degrees outside and slick! It's and, icy. And so we're inside. We've been having, staying inside this whole oh, snowstorm. Oh, I know. We had beautiful uh, Sunday dinner. Do you make, oh. do you, are you still making big Sunday dinners? Do you big, make big Sunday dinners? Well, we do, we do over here. Uh -huh. And uh, so today we had stewed cabbage with lentils and barbecue pork. And I know. Cornbread and rice and carrot cake. I know. <laughs> uh, Yolanda's uh, really experimenting with some date ginger carrot cake. It's cashew honey fro. I don't know. It's got everything. Oh, yeah, cashew honey frosting. Uh, a cashew, with cashew honey frosting. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, see, that's her street name, cashew honey. I okay. think. I think. No, otherwise known as Cashew Honey Frosting. <laughs> uh -huh. That's the full name, Cashew Honey Frosting. Gotcha. Yeah, it's the first full street on uh, full street name. Well, I want to acknowledge here. everybody in the room. We're so hey. happy to see y'all. I know. Uh, you know, Arizona, you look gorgeous. Of Thank course. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Connie, I'm so happy to see you. It's always such a pleasure. And if Ellen's in the room, give her a big hug I from know. us. Uh -huh. And um, Sina, we love you, of course. I know. Always, see, always, always. Connie changes the painting in her apartments. We we, oh. we have the same paintings in our apartment <laughs> all the time. We don't we don't switch the art around. I think uh, she has great art taste. I over know there. she does. It's beautiful. Well, we are so excited about this evening, and we're thrilled to be able to, um, you know, George's message this morning. We are going to mm -hmm. completely at. We're going to continue on this theme of yeah. who's who, what is the ego and who is That's experiencing true. what. We're actually going to continue. Uh, on with that theme. What are the odds that mm -hmm. everybody tracks together in the in these spaces? <laughs> you know, because we're only ever talking about one thing, right? Right. There's only one teacher, and so mm -hmm. you know, get, get you know, I, I keep remembering the introduction to A Course in Miracles, oh, yeah. where it says, um, <laughs> uh, you know, you don't get to decide uh, what the. It, uh, what to take, but you do get to decide the order that you want to take it in. Oh, what the curriculum? Right, yeah. the curriculum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Well, a lot of us are choosing the same order. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're we're on the same. We've got the same syllabus for some reason. You know, and we're we keep all on the same. Yeah. Something. Well, no, we're oh, on the same. Right. Oh yeah, no, we're all, we're all yes. together. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, all yeah, together yeah. learning. We're going to continue mm -hmm. this theme mm -hmm. of uh, what is an ego. How do we think about an mm -hmm. ego, especially with the, the of course miracles talks mm -hmm. about it. And remember that. Um, uh, Helen Shuckman was a uh, Jungian psychologist, psychologist and sociologist. So at Columbia University. At Columbia University. So you can Here think in about New York City. Yeah, New York City. Oh <laughs> uh, no! Here's to New York City. Hi, so, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. So Yay. here we are. You know, so there's the context. That's like that's who Holy Spirit was speaking through. Like that's mm. how, that's the message that is speaking to. So it's it's always valuable to go to the to look at anything that you're reading and anything that you're doing mm. hermeneutically. 
Like hermeneutic. Hermeneutically, a good, nice, big 25 that's cent nice, word there. That's a bigger than 25 is cent it, word. Is it, is it a full dollar word? <laughs> My mother said, that's a big dollar word out of such of a little boy. You know, that's a, that's a little mouth. That's a big word. You know, because I was a, I was a little... He was a little know-it-all. I was a little know-it-all know as a kid. Who, 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 who would believe that? Um... He used to take his chess board around <laughs> yeah, I and did. try to teach people how I to did. play chess. I did. Is that my cute? first obsession was chess, so I would go around in my three-piece suit because I dressed up every single day as in a little suit and carried a, a chess board and tried to teach people how to play chess wherever I went. That's, That's how ab 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 patently obnoxious I was. Um, so hermeneutically, hermeneutics just means who's talking. Who's it speaking talking? to, and what's the time that it takes? What's the era or the, the the culture that it happens in? Who are you speaking to? I know, so it's just like hermeneutics works with your own brain too. <laughs> who's talking? Who's, who's listening? Talking? And who needs this information? Right? Who needs it? You know. <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe me. What do we do? What do we got for the sing along today, Reverend Yolanda? So I'll stop talking. <laughs> well, we're gonna do our uh, new favorite. We are. Grace goes with me. Oh, I don't it's, it's have the. Um, I don't actually have the uh, words to put in the chat. I'm sorry, but maybe, uh, maybe you know it already. Oh, let's hope we. And I we think will we're share. Gonna, we're gonna just assume that you know it. Yeah. There we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Grace goes with me wherever I go. She goes with me. goes with me wherever I go. Sacred mystery, wherever I go. Her life surrounds me. Her love enfolds me. Her power protects me. And the presence of grace watches over me. So wherever I shirt with everything left really got Dottie and Marie singing that you know Dottie and Marie singing that song well if you stay tuned for later for Sounds of Awakening I'm giving things a word yeah no well I have a big 70s surprise for you yeah. tonight mm -hmm. on uh, it just reminds me of this, this <laughs> these songs I think that, but, that uh, it was, was written in the 70s though it was it? well I mean the song I'm gonna share tonight is I'm not gonna tell you anymore because it's a surprise it's so delicious <laughs> so wonderful but we're going to have, this, a, this is a great evening. Um, after us today, uh, Jacqueline is not with us, but uh, Akalesh Iyer is mm -hmm. with us. Which we're and, really looking forward to that. Yeah, we really are. And then after Akalesh is Regina, and then uh, Sounds of Awakening. So it's a great evening in the sanctuary. Sounds of Awakening is Yolanda's program. It is. And um, tonight I have special guests, the Kennedy family, which I met through uh, Reverend Jacqueline. And so I'm very excited to have them. Cam and um, Ellie Kennedy, and also my friend Rosemary Lore, who wow. I, I she's just 
<laughs> one of our Adorable. deepest, one of our best friends. She's one of our best friends. One of our best friends. So, stay tuned. But right now, we're going to look at the lessons this week. I know. It's really, so, um, I, I think, well, let's go back to like the lesson 33. Okay, yeah, that's lesson, cool. Yeah, 33. Because it brings us into this whole discussion. Right, the mm. whole discussion of uh, who we are and you know uh, what's happening here. Mm. Uh, so, n- lesson thirty-three is there is another way of looking, looking at, at the, the world. world. Doesn't that crack things open? It's so gentle; it cracks mm-hmm. things open just a little bit. Mm-hmm. If I'm ups- remember, if mm-hmm. I'm upset, there is There's another, another way, way of looking, of looking at, the at the world. And you know? the next one, thirty-four, is I, I could can see <laughs> peace instead of this. Uh huh. <laughs> I could see peace <laughs> instead, instead of this. this. Uh, I always say so. I could see peace instead of these. Instead, instead of these, I could see I could peace, say peace instead, instead of, of these. these. That's how I remember it. Well, you know, and then thirty-five is moving into where we are today. Yes. But thirty-five is my mind is part of God's. I, I am, am very, very holy. holy. This was first time through for me. Was hard to like mm. wrap my head around, kind of looking at mm-hmm. my mind. Is part of because you remember mm-hmm. like before this goes, God is in my mind, right? Right. Remember, mm-hmm. remember, God is in my mind. Yeah, I love that. I am very holy. Do you believe that? My mind is that? a part of God's. I am very holy, you and it's say okay. that over and over to yourself all day that day, right? Yeah, and it's really cool. It begins to um, well, the first time I read it was like, really, I'm holy. You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, it's 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 a bit jarring. You feel like you're out, you're, you're arrogant or something, right? Yeah, and the, and we find out that that's not arrogance. Yeah, actually. <laughs> It's just the state of who we are. And Lesson 36 capitalizes on that. And it says, my holiness envelops everything I see. Whether I know it or not. Right. So I don't have to believe it, actually. Right. Right. I don't have to believe it. Yeah, my holiness envelops everything I see. Uh An envelope. It it, encompasses Mm -hmm. in everything I I see. see. And today's lesson is dun, 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 dun. my holiness blesses the world. What a contrast! My holiness wow. blesses the world. Why is it? What do you mean a contrast? Be, keep, by, instead of walking and trying to get or trying to manipulate or uh, seeing as seeing as being done to, mm. like uh, my whole, I, I I'm I'm a beneficial component mm. in the world rather than I have to earn my place. Or, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I need to do, I, you know, I need to do mm-hmm. nothing. Of course, says, so, so, mm-hmm. what's all this efforting? What's this, bec- all this becoming, this needing oh, to, right. to, to do? My holiness mm-hmm. blesses, blesses the, the world. world. I, mm-hmm. my, I, I need, it's, it's who I am that blesses. Right. Not anything that uh, I need to do. Or I have yeah. to become. I have to become. Yeah, this yeah. is, that uh, truth is really it was just, coming yeah. to me a lot. I don't have to become anything. Mm-hmm. Um but we did this in reverse order, but I still want to do it because <laughs> we have a cute little song that uh, that uh, goes oh. over the workbook uh, introduction, the introduction to the workbook uh-huh. lessons, and it's a very cute. So this little is how song. to use them, mm-hmm. and this is how to use them. See if you can so. mem- so you can see if you can memorize this and see if it's a good way. It's a good attitude. Yeah. So here we go. No, 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 that's the wrong song right there. There we go.
welcome them. And some of them you may actively resist. None of it will matter or decrease their efficacy. So do not allow yourself to make exceptions in applying the ideas the workbook contains. Listening to that and remembering how 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 like that's how you apply truth, isn't it? You know, you don't have, yeah. you apply it to find you know to do do your own like scientific research. That's right, so cool. Project, I mean, right? um, so ethical. I want to say hi to Ben who's just Yay. joined us. Hey Ben, we love you. So glad you're here. And Mag Mag has joined us. Yes. I just now see Mag. Uh -huh. Hey Mag. So um, that's fun. We love to go over the um, the workbook instructions because uh, you know. They're good. They're good lessons for life, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. And especially on this path, it's really, it's really interesting lately. And I think George even talked about it this morning that our beliefs get in the way sometimes, you mm -hmm. know. And so, um, it's really ethical and really gentle of her to say, "You need not believe the, the ideas. ideas. You need you not need even welcome. welcome them or accept it's, them." And, and you're welcome to actively resist res them. resist them, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're just sharing um, ideas, and you know. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You know, like how they, they, say, they say in the twelve step, some twelve step circles, take what you like and leave the rest. <laughs> take what you can use and leave the rest. Right? <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, and that's the interesting thing to me about revisiting the course every year because uh, in previous years I have rejected and actively resisted a lot, <laughs> a lot of these ideas, you know. And then as the years go on, I was really, oh gosh, that really is true. That really works for me, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so what I think. Um, I'd like to do going into our um, meditation today is is re-emphasize today's lesson, which is my holiness, holiness blesses, blesses the, the world. world. Now, how about that? You are holy. I am holy. We are blessed. You are blessed. All of us are blessed, mm -hmm. no matter what. And so, can we um, live and act like that without needing to believe it? It's really, yeah, that's really interesting. And um, so let's just take that act like it's true thought into um, into our circle of love and meditation. So of course I'll ring the bell three times and breathe, and and we'll do a little uh, silence and a little acknowledgement, and then I'm going to share a, a song with you that I don't really have a video for. It'll just be a a picture on the screen, but. It's one of my most popular songs called We Are Angels, and I just wanted to share it now in a um, new version that I have of it, and um, just emphasizing this, that we all share, um, you know, this journey of life mm -hmm. that sometimes we like and sometimes we don't like. <laughs> so here we go. stillness there's hope it lights the way as I travel far to my certain goal of oneness with love 
I need do nothing to create this circle of love because it comes from inside of me. And together in this room, we're co-creating and acknowledging and knowing that this circle of love exists. It exists not only in our lives, but in everyone's lives, and it encompasses every living being on our planet. Because this circle of love that we're talking about is unconditional, and it includes everything that we like and everything that we don't like. And we bless it all. And we say, blessed be. And so it is. Now, sometimes others don't take so kindly to our shine. They're stuck in the dark, and soon we forget our shine too. We can't see it. But alien love children go by another name. We are angels. So, I invite you to close your eyes with me now and let's together co-create a circle of love to remember that even in the dark, we glow. <sighs> this love begins in our hearts and moves out to our newly assembled family, where this love joins arms and moves out of the building and into our towns, our states, our country, and our planet. This circle of love includes all that we like and all that we do not like. <laughs> everything in the world and everything in ourselves and offers it all a radical yes. As you listen to this song, as you receive this passion and sing along, take with you this question. What are you willing to release in order to love, to live your truth, to glow in the light and in the dark. Why do I feel so out of place? So out of touch with the human race? I don't seem to understand why my brother won't lend a helping hand? Why do people tear apart? Ooh, my tender heart. Why does the nighttime seem so dark? When the light shines inside my heart. We are angels and we're struggling to be human. I tell you of the things I fear. I push away, then I pull you near. I tell you of my fantasies. Love the way that I speak honestly Why is it so hard to love The one I've been dreaming of Don't you see yourself in me Don't you see what we can be
To be human We are angels We are angels And we're struggling To be human We are angels We are angels And we're struggling To be That's the press the prettiest, that's the pretty oh. one. That's the pretty one, yeah, isn't that's, it? That's a new arrangement there. So we are happy to give you a message today. I know. Where is it from? It is from what oh, chapter? Okay, I think we're on chapter four. What chapter are we on? Yeah. Well, chapter, chapter four. four mm -hmm. The illusions uh, of no. the ego. So, so I know the uh, the first chapter is, the, is 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 what's the real world. The second chapter is what's the problem. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no. The second yeah. The second chapter is um yeah. What's the what's the problem? And then uh, the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to do what's the ego. We're going to spend two weeks talking about the voice in our head or the culture or things that's not us the the voice of the material world or the voice of separation and how to identify it and not be afraid of it not to make not to make it something that has to uh, be wrestled to the ground and destroyed oh that's a great i know that's a great idea <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to have to do that i know the time. because you know uh she offers the idea of the course of miracles that the ego is is more like uh, uh an animal uh, mm. You're an animal instinct, mm -hmm. preservation, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, fight Speaking or Speaking of animals, kind of I'm turning around to see where my cat is. I know. She's, she's crying. She, uh, <laughs> yes, we have a very, we, we have a very large cat, a very she's needy, very, a very needy very cat needy. that we love very much. <laughs> she has her food flown in from Denmark once a month. <laughs> We have well, to buy this particular food. I know. So <laughs> it's how, made how, in how Denmark. It's a really good example of an ego. I'm only eating this. This yeah. is the only thing that's going to work for yes. me. <laughs> and our cat's a very good example of reminding, you know, um, reminding yes, us of, of, what, what of, of what the ego is. But let me, I want to, I want to share this. I want to share okay. this image with you. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, a National Geographic image uh, of a, a, uh, what's called the uh the uh, the species is called the golden monkey mm. so it's part of the blue monkey tribe and this is mm. a, a subset of blue monkeys called golden monkeys mm. and uh there's something that i think is human beings that we recognize in this mother in this this mother and child mm. you know yeah. it's iconic she's actually in, in glow and you know you could it, mm -hmm. it's 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 the madonna you it know. is, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's it so, really it's is. so, it oh, is wow. so. It's this image of the mother and child mm -hmm. is such a classic image, and she uses this image uh, and this idea of a mother and child uh, as an explanation of how the ego functions mm. in our world, and not to be, not to like, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say demonize it, but not not make the ego the problem, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, so in chapter chapter four is this is the illusions of the ego. Section three is the ego and the fault, the ego and false autonomy, auto self, autonomy, self, self yeah. making ego uh -huh. and the, and the sense of making that we that we make or create ourselves. Mm. Right, false autonomy because mm. we don't have autonomy. We're part of a community. I mm. I didn't make myself. My parent, you know, there's, so, and I don't even continue to make myself. I don't, I don't even digest my own food, right? <laughs> you know that you have microbes in your in your stomach that actually break down the food to make the nutrients available to you. That we're not even digesting our own food. Wow. That we create a a system and a microbial and a biome in order to live <laughs> in. You know, it's just so we're, we're not autonomous. We're not like autonomous. 
So, That's so interesting. And there are eleven there are eleven paragraphs in this chapter. So I want to get right in because it's very it's very good. It's very interesting. But we're going to plow through a little bit because I want to get to some really good points that she makes at the end. So uh, would you, would you read what the little little bits I've have highlighted for you? I sure will. But I also want to uh, tell people that we kind of go back and forth between screens, and we'd love to have your comments if if you uh, want to put them in the chat as we go along. And after each uh, sort of paragraph paragraph we'll pop back and see what the chat I'm computering is. into what I'm talking I'm talking to a black I'm talking to a blank <laughs> screen with my words on it and I'm not seeing your beautiful faces yeah so. we we love to see your yeah. beautiful faces type in the thing or interrupt me fine <laughs> yeah you can unmute uh -huh. if you have a question uh -huh. or anything. stop yeah um. or so here we go <laughs> okay here's what's up first I know once you read this um, it is reasonable to ask how the mind could ever have made the ego. <laughs> In fact, it is the best question you could ask. Everyone makes an ego or a self for himself, which is subject to enormous variation because of its instability. <laughs> he also makes an ego for everyone else he perceives, which is equally variable. The ego is only an idea and not a fact. Your own state of mind is a good example of how the ego was made. When you threw knowledge away, it is as if you never had it. Okay, throwing <laughs> knowledge away. So the ego is ego is not based on what is true. Mm. So what is it based on? She she tells she goes it's the ego is the continuation of the past. past. It's the continuation of the of time. Mm. It lives in time. It doesn't live in the present. It lives mm. in time. It either lives in an imaginary future that it wants for itself, mm. or it lives in the past where things went right or wrong. Mm. It just it lives there. And it, it it in order to be living or making decisions from an ego, requires us to abandon knowledge and value what is not true. Do you see what okay. that is? It, yeah. we, we have to value something that we can't prove is true. So we don't value knowledge. She talks a lot about what we value. Do you value truth? If we value truth, we would work to being present and doing that uh, scientific uh, exploration that we talked about earlier. How to use everything that comes along. And this variable expression is of a single idea. Right? It has variable expressions because it's not made with knowledge. It's not reliable. Mm. It doesn't, it is, you know, it's the same foundations of not true, wanting and getting. And she's going to get into that. She says, and this is the idea of perception, like how we see things, mm -hmm. the pa and which we learned from the past, right? Perception versus knowledge. Seeing through the eyes of the past or seeing what is truly here and unchangeable. And she calls that knowledge. Knowledge. We want to work with knowledge because that is actually true and truth and reliable. We make good decisions when we seek for knowledge. Perception is specific to a time and a place and a person. Therefore, it's in the material world. Okay, do we see that? Perception mm. is of a specific time, it needs a specific place, place it right. needs a specific person, you mm -hmm. know, it needs a subject and an object and all of this. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is universal and it is unchanging. unchanging. Okay. So we, the idea I always say is mm -hmm. two plus two is equal to four in New York City and in La Jolla and <laughs> in China and Shanghai and, mm -hmm. you know, in Nairobi. And two plus two equals four, no matter where we're sitting on the world, no matter where we're sitting in the universe, that's knowledge. So read this. So she's contrasting perception, perception and, knowledge, and knowledge as opposed to with the ego and our truest nature. So she wants to be able to mm -hmm. see, can we see those things and think of them so we can identify them where the pro, where we're causing our own suffering. So read the next bit. I will, but let's pop back into the chat and see if anybody has anything to say. Oh, true. Welcome. Oh, hey, Meg. Yeah. <laughs> got some, hey, yeah. got some welcome, the oh, welcome yeah. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the next part is, oh, Read the underline too, because yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. Okay, the next part. This is really cool that she says this. She says, think of the love of animals for their offspring and the need they feel to protect them. That is because they regard them as part of themselves. No one dismisses something he considers part of himself. You react to your ego much as God does to his creations with love, protection, and charity. The question is not how you respond to the ego, but what you believe you are. Say that again. 
the question is not how you <laughs> respond to the ego, but what you believe you are. Belief is an ego function. And as long as your origin is open to belief, you are regarding it <laughs> from an ego viewpoint. This is so enlightening. This is so helpful. It's, simp it's so straightforward, too. Yeah. So this is the nature of the ego. The nature of the ego is the animal mind. Right. There is nothing wrong, wrong exactly. with a mother trying to protect the safety of herself and her child. Right. That's, that, that's not wrong. Exactly. That's what the ego is for. Mm -hmm. is because when the bus is coming down the street and it honks get out of this get out of the street yeah you know get, be frightened get you know ah yeah you know get out of the way. i know when you hear a rattle and a rattlesnake you kind of look around and your high senses are heightened because that's the functions of the ego so mm -hmm. love is what makes us as god loves what she creates we love what we make Mm -hmm. See the difference between make yeah. and create? Yeah. We love what we make and God loves what she creates. Mm -hmm. We could be working with what we're creating with God as the, as opposed to making something that is, is the, that is ephemeral, right? So love, it, and we love this ego, this body, this material world, we, th things, really. We love things that, and they cannot love us back. Right. It's not a relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Being in love with things and believing that things offer happiness or, or beauty or, or truth or anything is just suffering. Now we we protect these things though. We protect our bodies. And to a certain extent that is that is very healthy. But to but to live for pleasure is not. That's the mm -hmm. continuation of this idea. And so she says that the ego, there's no charity in the ego, right? But we have charity for the ego. We keep thinking, oh, it's going to be better. It's going to be, it's going to get better. My, you know, working with the ego to try to cleanse the ego. I used to say, uh, I spent a lot of time, mm -hmm. and George talked about this earlier about a spiritual ego. Right. I, I, try, I tried for a long time to like baptize my ego. Right. I used to say I was, dr I was continually dragging my ego to the River Jordan, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so because we're creators, we're artists, mm -hmm. and so loving the material world, loving, loving, and having charity for material for the material world, is misguided sense of our own creation and our mm -hmm. own artistry. It's just, it's just the it's a, it's a different use of our power. Mm -hmm. So the question she asks is, who do, do we, we believe, believe that we are? We are? Yeah. Right. So this is the, the powerful foundation of the ego. Mm -hmm. It's the belief in the it's the belief is an ego function. It's the foundation. Belief is the foundation of the ego because it doesn't need any proof. It's just like, I believe that, mm -hmm. you know, that's the that's the origins of, wow, that's just your opinion, man. I mean, you ever hear that? <laughs> so we cannot uh -huh. change or alter creation no matter how much we believe. Right, we don't. We cannot change the function of uh, two plus two equals four, no matter how we think it's. We bl I believe it's five. Well, you can believe that all the time, <laughs> but you can never prove that it's true. And the ego, she says in this paragraph, the ego kind is so a little bit uncomfortable because it knows there is another way. Mm. That's why this, you know, the lessons are so important. Uh, there is yeah. another way of, of looking, looking at, at the world. world. Yeah. I can see peace instead, instead of, of this. Mm -hmm. You know, we know, we know it. So read this next part. Read this next one. Okay, pop back into the room okay. right quick, just in case there are questions. Oh, there's something. Uh, oh, Meg, be back. China. Okay, yeah, Yay. great. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, let's see. Undermining the ego's thought system must be perceived as painful, even though this is anything but true. Mm -hmm. Babies scream in rage <laughs> if you take away a knife or scissors. <laughs> Yet, whether or not you recognize it now, you have agreed to cooperate in the effort to become both harmless and helpful. Attributes that go together. Be patient a while and remember that the outcome is certain. Mm. Right. So yep. we don't even have... See, this is like wrestling with the ego mm -hmm. is is time is not time well spent. Do, right. it if you, you know, do it if you need to. Do it if you need to mm -hmm. fi figure it out. You know, wrestle with that question. Mm -hmm. Who is this? Who's speaking? Who needs this... Who needs who's needs the body to look a certain way, mm. right? So this is she. She kind of is moving in the direction of this is just maturity mm. the, in, into that mother and child, 
know, this mm-hmm. is just mature. She's ra- she's raising us up to no longer look at the world as a child mm-hmm. would look at it. Mm-hmm. To recognize what we want might not be good for us because the reasons why we want it oh, are, right. are, are, you know, we're, we will hurt ourselves with mm-hmm. the reasons we want it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is a little bit about a growing up is, is a metaphor for acquiring knowledge, acquiring and interacting with what is actually true and provable. And you remember that, you know, lesson 24 says, I do not perceive my own best interests. Right. Right. So we need often along this path, somebody who mm-hmm. does perceive our best interests right. and is willing to like take this, help us let go of the scissors mm-hmm. and the knives in our own hands so we can stop hurting ourselves and others. Even though Oof. it feels difficult to feel like I'm giving away something that's mine. This is this has been a coping mechanism. It's worked for me, you know? Mm. And this is avoiding pain is not an effective strategy for waking up. It can mm. it can certainly motivate. And half the course, half the first half of the course is is this motivation to move away from your own suffering. Right. The other half is to move is to is to move toward a greater expression of peace. But the first half of the Course in Miracles is really the motivation is to move away from our own suffering, is to recognize how we're how we're running with scissors. Okay. <laughs> so right. And she asks us to change your ad change our attitude. Change our attitude. Change your attitude to <laughs> being fearful, to being harmless and helpful. Mm. From being right, so being our ego harmful. doesn't look yeah. at something that's harmless and helpful as being very powerful at all. Oh yeah, you know, because because things that have scissors and knives are the things that are powerful, powerful. Right? right? If I can have scissors and knives, and I you know I can mm-hmm. learn to be a better attack force, then I could you know I'm powerful, right? Mm-hmm. The guy with the big, the guy with the biggest guns gets to decide the rules. Right, that's the ego, right? Yeah. So and she and the request is, just be, be patient, patient, Padawan. You know, <laughs> just. Be patient, because the end is certain that you, you will get this. It's mm-hmm. something that's innate in you. If we could learn mm-hmm. to see what doesn't work. So read, so read what I've heard, highlighted next. We're going to continue on. Okay, cool. Just check, pop back into the room right quick. Oh, sure. Let's see. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go back. All right. Okay. Only, Only those who have a real and lasting sense of abundance can be truly charitable. Okay, that's she's a changed great, this yeah. direction. She goes, okay, now if you see this, mm-hmm. then you can see what you do want. Mm-hmm. Right. right. If you can see what you don't want, you can, you see, can what see what you, what do, you do want. want. Right. So continue on. Giving to get, quote unquote, is an inescapable law of the ego, which always evaluates itself in relation to other egos. Mm-hmm. It is therefore continually preoccupied with the belief in scarcity that gave rise to it. That's the paradigm. Woo! Getting, giving to to get. get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always evaluating Mm -hmm. in my relationship to what, not what is real, but an ego that I've created for you Mm -hmm. and what I think you're up to. Mm -hmm. It is therefore continually preoccupied preoccupied occupied with not with what's happening but with some scenario in my mm-hmm. head i can't even see because i'm pre i'm i've preloaded my judgment i've mm-hmm. preloaded pre- prejudice right mm-hmm. pre justice so well, I've, i'm prejudiced to the world i'm prejudiced to my own seeing and she says self-esteem is the way this works self-esteem and she even used that as in quotes is mm-hmm. always vulnerable to stress, stress. hmm which refers to any perceived threat to the ego's existence. So even this, I see that was what I mean. I was like taking my ego to the Jordan River. Oh right, right. Mm-hmm. The, it, it, to improve my self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Because the, mm-hmm. yourself and your ego and the function of the ego as protection against you from getting run over by a bus, it might be necessary, but it's not. It can never be the the thing that you are. It's part of the software that came with your body. Mm-hmm. So give, it's giving to get versus a state of abundance. She's offering us a contrast there. Mm-hmm. Do you want this ab- this abundant expression of who you are or this giving to get, this transactional relationship with everything? Right. She, she says abundance is generates charitable behavior, right? I have enough. You have enough. Together, we can, together all of our needs are met, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In the wholeness, there is peace. In the, you know, there's peace peace and wholeness Mm -hmm. when we're when as if we know ourselves as one there's no getting to get and the knowledge of ourselves and the world this idea of abundance is the knowledge of who we are so i can be charitable Mm. i can let you win you know i can Mm. you know help or give or give without without any expectations Mm. right and you know 
one of the things that my parents taught me really well she was never loan money you can't do you can't do without hmm. oh right you know <laughs> good point you know so that's the idea of giving to get mm. it feels like sacrifice mm. you know i have to give you something in order to get something mm -hmm. i have to give up something in order to get something this transactional cost analysis belief in scarcity right. is the ego and it's a lot of the way that, that the world operates mm -hmm. you know it takes as it takes as a given that this is reality. You hear this all, I go, get real, man. That's just the way the world works. Well, actually, the world doesn't work that way. And you can look at nature. Mm. And you can look at whole systems. Mm -hmm. We can look at the way the earth lives and moves and breathes and the jet stream. The, the, um, wow. The um, Bible story. says it really good that um, the, it, it rains on the evil. <laughs> it, it rains mm -hmm. on the evil and the and wicked. The good. And the good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. all the same time. Yeah, you know, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So the temptation is to is to make the ego healthy through some kind of self esteem program. Yeah, and it, it's stressful because it's, this is an idea of becoming, becoming. something. Oh my God! You know, yeah. so it, this is addresses a threat that we don't ever fully acknowledge mm. that we believe that we're lacking and little and small right. and can't do it and we're alone and no one will help us and mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. I have to give up everything mm -hmm. in order to you know I've given up so much. You ever hear <laughs> someone's, uh, you know, <laughs> I had a, I, I had a friend say it goes I gave up so much you know for my kids and they're so ungrateful you know. <laughs> It's yeah. a it, it's a way of even mm -hmm. a transactional relationships with mm -hmm. the people that people and people that we love, you know. And it's just it causes suffering. It's it not real. It's not you based on knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's not mature, even. That's true. Okay, read seven. Okay, the ego literally lives by comparisons. Equality is beyond its grasp, and charity becomes impossible. Mm -hmm. Appetites are getting mechanisms representing the ego's need to confirm itself. Mm -hmm. The ego regards the body as its home and tries to satisfy itself through the body. But the idea that this is possible is a decision of the mind, which has become completely confused about <laughs> what is really possible. <laughs> Okay, the body in the Course of Miracles is all is is all material existence. It's right. all form. Our mm -hmm. body is you know to think uh, to, our ego resort, regards the world and the world of form as its home. It mm -hmm. is only satisfied with things that it can get through the cons through consuming, using, participating as an object, a body with other objects, yeah. bodies and you know food or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. Cars, I love this. Our, our, okay. We're cars in the shop, so I'm thinking about cars. <laughs> so he goes, "This is she says, this is a decision of the mind, right? About so the substance for abundance are this. She the calls substitute. the substitute. I'm she's reading my notes. <laughs> the substitute for abundance. She, this is the substitute for abundance. The core characteristics of the ego: comparison, inequality, and charity becomes impossible. Mm -hmm. And the ego's appetites." The material appetites, like hunger and protecting yourself and all this stuff, are getting mechanisms, okay? And they all go into place and they all become natural and work of themselves. Regina will tell you this. If we don't prioritize them, they take care of themselves, right? The food comes, the recognition comes. The, our, our, if, we, if we do what is ours to do, we do not have to worry about... And we've never had to worry about how much we're going to eat, whether are people are going to like us, whether we're going to, you know, where they're going to have a place to sleep when we're doing what is ours to do. You can look at the life of the character Jesus who wandered everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the classic things of the taking a vow of poverty is an understanding of this idea. Mm -hmm. I'm taken care of because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't have to worry about my belly because it, it will be fed because it'll be a result of what I do because I'm participating in what is real. Yeah. Not to do that is, is confirming and upholding a paradigm of lack. A yeah. paradigm that I'm a, I'm a thing and you're a thing and we're all going to thing together and then die. Okay? <laughs> or the idea of pursuing this perpetual orgasm machine. Woo! Right? This just seeking for pleasure. And I've been that person too. Right. You know? So the ego claims the body of the material world as itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the promises are the physical needs are met by doing what is ours to do. Mm -hmm. So the, the focus on sensations and thoughts... Ours and other people is sort of the, what are they thinking? They don't like me. What's mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. I need to make them like me. I need to put on a different hat or whatever. <laughs> I want to need, need, need them to like me. So focus 
on listening to an interior wisdom that is outside of the paradigm of getting to give. And yeah. outside of that paradigm is one of abundance, which speaks to the knowledge of who we are. Read this. We've got the last three paragraphs here. Okay. And we're uh, in the last 10 minutes. I uh, know. Look at that. Okay. So the ego believes it is completely on its own. <laughs> it can only turn to other egos and try to unite with them <laughs> in a feeble attempt at identification <laughs> or attack them. Oh, I know. <laughs> the, the range from viciousness to, I mean, suspiciousness, suspiciousness to viciousness. I know. Anyway, spirit in its knowledge is unaware of the ego. It does not attack it. It merely cannot conceive of it at all. Right. While the ego is equally unaware of spirit, it does perceive itself as being rejected by something greater <laughs> than itself. I know that feeling of rejection. It's like, where do you, where's the place? Where's that place of rejection? This is, this is self-esteem in the ego terms. Right. This right. is self-esteem in the ego's terms. Right. So the so-called battle for survival is only the ego's struggle to preserve itself and its interpretation of its own beginning. Mm -hmm. This beginning is usually associated with physical birth. See, that's why it's not a problem. This, mm -hmm. The ego isn't the problem. The, it are, it's our belief that we're the ego mm -hmm. that's, that's the problem. She says it right there. The so-called battle for, for survival. survival. Right, the competition. She says competition isn't real, mm -hmm. and she says hierarchy is the is the birth of suffering. You're so this is this we don't need to we don't need to have power over. We have power within this on all the strength that we need to do what is ours to do, and it's the association and the belief that we are a physical thing interacting with other physical things in the physical world, and that's it. Yeah, and spirit, which is not in danger, danger, does not need, need to, to be, be salvaged. salvaged. Yeah. Right. So identifying with the spirit, solidarity, ex solitary existence versus our wholeness versus our completeness is the contrast she's making here. Mm -hmm. She describes solitary existence as fearful, creates alliances and enemies. It has mythical origins in the in, in the material world, and it <laughs> makes what it makes things that mm -hmm. cannot create themselves. Right. It's not regenerative. The things we make aren't regenerative. Mm -hmm. Like more things. Material world is not regenerative. Only things that live are regenerative. And right. we, we don't even create the things that live. We don't do, it's not in our capability. You know, to, that's why Frankenstein's so frightening. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie! You know, I created life, right? And, and this need to be saved, this need to be coming, this need to be seen, this, you know, need to be told we're okay. Mm. You know? It's just misguided. It, it, that's all. Those things are actually real. It's to, for the discovery inside the paradigm that we already are enough. And she calls this wholeness. She calls this idea abundance. Mm. And it is and it's not concerned about achieving or striving or getting. It's charitable. It has enough. It's mm. joyful. It doesn't need to be saved. Who wants to identify with that, right? I mean, that's like, oh, hello, that's that's who I want. I want to prove that's true. Let's do the scientific experiment where that's true. So read the last two paragraphs. Wow, this is so interesting. Five minutes. Okay. Salvation is nothing more than right-mindedness because right perception is uniformly without attack and therefore wrong-mindedness wrong, wrong -mindedness <laughs> is obliterated. The ego cannot survive without judgment and is laid aside accordingly. Um, our minds cannot be but dis dictated by the thought system to which it adheres. Uh -huh. cannot, is, our minds cannot but be, be dictated yeah, by the thought, thought system, system that we adhere, adhere to. to. Yeah, right. It cannot be emphasized too often that correcting perception is merely a temporary expedient. It is necessary only because misperception is a block to knowledge, while accurate perception is a stepping stone towards it. Who is the you who are living in this world? Spirit <laughs> is immortal and immortality is a constant state. Knowledge never involves comparisons. Uh -huh. That is its main difference from everything else the mind can grasp. Okay, so to wrap this up, this is, this is the progression. Did you hear it? The perception to knowledge. And she goes, salvation is right-mindedness. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is one-mindedness. Mm -hmm. Correct perception is right-mindedness. So the mm -hmm. goal is self-knowledge. The goal is who is in the world? The goal is understanding who wakes up. 
So the perception is removing the blocks to the awareness of the presence of love, mm. letting go of comparisons, letting go of judgments, letting go of our own perception and to live in self-knowledge. That's where the abundance is. Wow. And that's the lesson. So there's nothing to fear from our little monkey inside that <laughs> just wants to protect the little child inside, right? Aww. It's not a problem, but it's not who we are. It's a function of the material world. It's not to be, we're not to be afraid of it. We're to learn from it, to see it inside of its own paradigm that works in a healthy whole systems way, if we'll let it and stop getting involved with comparisons and judgment and everything. So I want to remind you that you are listening to <laughs> Church for the Two Green Minimum. I'm your favorite anarchist preacher, and I'm here with the love of my life, the Reverend Yolanda. Hey, y'all. Tell them what else, tell them what we're doing, sweetie. Well, um, I think, let's go back to the room. Um, hey, y'all. People are I know. Uh, showing up for uh, Akhilesh Iyar because I know, I know um, this is really good. that's what's happening next. So I don't want to uh, do too much because I don't want to uh, overstep. So let me just uh, do a quick little thing with my ukulele. Okay. Because um, we can say, let go of grievances. Just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness, then we are free. We are free. We are free. Let go of grievances and we are free. All right, thanks for joining us, and we're going to stay tuned for uh, uh, Akalash IR. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next Sunday.